All right, welcome everybody to the Davis County Business Support Webinar Series. Uh, this is our general business session. Uh, we just like to welcome all the participants that have joined us. Um, since this is such a unique session and we're not sure where all the different attendees, uh, what your businesses are and what type of sector you're in, we'd like to ask you at the bottom of the screen, there's a, a chat button. If you could click on that and put uh, the name of your business, uh, that way we could um, hopefully if, you know, if there's a majority in, in a certain type of sector, we could address some of those specific needs. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to welcome everybody. I'm Rob Sant. I'm the Davis County Economic Development Director. Um, and in early March, just kind of a little background on this, uh, where this idea came from to host this webinar. In early March, when we realized that uh, the county would be have a direct impact by COVID-19, we formulated a plan. And part of that plan was to offer technical assistance to businesses. So um, we've done that through different webinars. Um, we did an SBA lending webinar where we ha had the SBA Utah district director on and helped have to, had him help answer some of the questions on applying for those funds. And then we're also doing this webinar series to help hopefully answer some of the most frequently asked questions and specific questions that you have about operating in the orange and now the yellow uh, risk factors. So when we sent out the the announcement for this webinar series, we were in the orange. We've now since moved to the yellow or the low risk. So most of our information will be focused on, on that phase. Um, to kind of just do uh, some introductions, as I mentioned, I'm Rob Sant. I'm the Davis County Economic Development Director. We also have Kaylee Crossley on. She's the Community Health Educator. And then we have Rochelle Blackamon, who's the Division Director for Environmental Health Services. And her deputy director, Jay Clark, is also on. Um, Jay will be answering some of the questions that you have as we go about this presentation. Um, kind of the, to outline a, a little mini agenda of what's gonna happen is I'll be turning the time over to the health department and they'll kind of go over some general guidance. And during that time, if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A box down at the bottom. And uh, Jay will be answering those questions during the presentation and and we'll highlight those questions that have been answered and also answer any other questions that he didn't quite get to or new questions you have when we're in that final session of our section of this session. So with that, I'll turn the time over to Kaylee. All right, great. We are happy to have everyone with us today. It looks like we have a good variety of, of uh, businesses that are joining today. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So today we're going to be covering some low risk um, or phase guidelines from the Utah Leads Together plan. So before we do that, we want to share some data with you of what's going on in Davis County. How did we know we were ready to transition to this low risk or yellow phase? Some different resources that are available to businesses, and then we'll go through that specific guidance for the general business guidance and individuals um, as we, as we um, continue to work together to slow the spread of this pandemic in our community. And again, as, as we go through this, feel free to ask questions in the chat or um, at the end. So we're gonna go to our website. So if you haven't been to it before, it is daviscountyutah.gov slash coronavirus. It will take you to this page. So this is the home page. Um, right here at the top, we have some of our data that's available. So the number of cases since this pandemic uh, was being investigated in our county hospitalizations and deaths. And thankfully, we haven't had any deaths since March. So we're really lucky everyone's done a great job with this. Um, we have some information about how to stay safe with those social distancing and some guidelines on that. You can connect with us on our social media. Quarantine, isolation, that kind of thing, those kind of things as well. So in this section right here, we have our low-risk guidance from the state. So with this, we have 
individual guidance, general business guidance, high risk individual guidance, and then specific industry guidance. So if you click on general business, this takes what's in that Utah Leads to, Together 2.0 plan and just outlines it in an easier way that's a, just more of a, at a glance for you as a business owner, um, for your employees to know how you can stay safe and how you can follow those guidelines. So if you have um, interest in specific industry guidance, you can just click over here and there's a variety of tabs available on that link. Um, at, again, at the top, I meant to share this. We also have resources in Spanish. So if, you, if there's a need there, feel free to access our Spanish page. And if you need additional resources in Spanish, please contact us. If you need other languages, the state has other languages available. And we're happy to help get those resources to you as well. So if you continue on our webpage, uh, we have these resource download sections. There's a section right here for businesses. You can find economic resources, resources on social distancing, some CDC recommendations for cleaning, disinfecting your facility, and also some um, posters and signs in our next tab. So we have some general hand washing, um, things to help screen and let your employees know about symptoms, things like that, and different guidelines. So those are all right there. And if you don't have a way to print those, feel free to contact us. We're happy to print those out for you and, and to get those to you. We want to make sure that you have the resources that you need. So if you continue on this website, we have information on mental health, different um, testing locations, information about antibody testing, just some of those common questions that may come up for you or your employees at this time. Also on our web page, if we go to the top again, we have a second tab right here that takes us to our dashboard. And on our dashboard, this gives us more data, more information to see uh, why can we go to yellow, what's going on in our county. Sorry, this page is frozen. One second. Try and refresh it. Okay. Try it from here. Okay, there we go. So this first graph right here, we have the number of lab confirmed cases per day in Davis County. So as you can see, it shows when we first started, uh, we, when we first had our first confirmed case in March, and then we peaked at the end of March and have gone down since then. So we're working to flatten the curve as, we, as you've probably been hearing. So this is a good sign for Davis County that we are seeing a downward trend with that. The second graph talks about the type of exposure, and in the beginning of this pandemic, we were having a lot of travel-related exposures, and now we're seeing more known contacts. So that's either from a household contact, a work contact, and we have had outbreaks at different work sites. Um, we've had restaurant outbreaks, manufacturing, healthcare. So when we know it, when we have a known contact, it helps to limit the spread because then we can see. Um, who those people were around and, and limit the exposure to other people. So we also have the percent who've tested positive in our hospitalization rate. So overall, this is our hospitalization rate, it's been 8.1%. And then we have 80% that have recovered, which is really good news. If you go to the second tab, phase risk indicators, this shows our 14 day count. So with the state's guidance, they look at data on a two week period to see how are our numbers doing? They look at a lot of different indicators such as hospitalizations. So right now we have 71 active cases for hospitalizations and we've been doing a lot of testing. So these are all really good indicators that we're in a good position as a county to be in a yellow phase. So if you are interested in more data, you can continue to look through these different graphs and feel free to reach out to us if you do have questions about any of this data or different resources that would be helpful to you as a business. Okay, so we just wanted to go over quickly how COVID-19 spreads. This is really important and kind of helps to, helps us understand why we've had some of these regulations. So it, it mainly spreads from person to person through respiratory droplets. So those come when we cough, when we sneeze, sometimes when we talk. And spread is more likely when there's close contact between people. So close contacts defined as being closer than six feet to someone for more than 10 minutes. 
So this is really a reason why we've had a lot of restrictions and regulations is to try and minimize that contact with others to slow the spread of this disease because we don't have a way to, to really treat this right now and that's our best, um, best way to, to prevent it and to slow the spread. So to encourage that, we have some signs that are available through that posters and signs module on our website. So these are just a couple examples of reminding people to stay six feet apart and wearing a mask is just an additional measure that we can take to slow that transmission. Uh, we also have posters about symptoms, so making sure that people that are sick, that they're not coming into your business, that also helps to slow the spread of this disease. We have some general posters about hand washing, um, covering your coughs and sneezes, all those good things, and staying six feet apart again. All those things can help slow the spread of this disease. So why do we have phase guidance again? This is a way to balance health and economy. And so a lot of professionals, public health and other uh, business partners have been a part of this plan so that we can balance those things, that we can keep people safe, but we can also keep our economy going. So there were a lot of people that helped put these guidelines together and it's really to help us respond um, in a unified effort to help keep our community safe. So what does it mean that we moved to yellow? So on Saturday, the governor issued an, an order and moved us to a yellow phase or a low risk phase. And Davis County is in that zone. There are a couple places in Utah that are still in moderate risk, but overall as a state, we're in a yellow zone together. So this means that we still need to follow public health guidance, but there are a, some loosening of those restrictions. So we wanna continue social distancing or staying six feet away and avoiding being around large groups of people when possible. When social distancing isn't possible or, or when we can't maintain that six feet distance from someone else, it's recommended that we wear face coverings. And gatherings were moved from 20 people to 50 people. We still prefer those smaller group interactions, but for private get-togethers, you can have up to 50 people. For businesses, that number isn't as important as long as you social distance. That's um, the guideline that we're going for there. It's also recommended to continue to limit out-of-state travel and to symptom check if you're going to be in situations of close contact. And for our high-risk individuals, we want to continue to protect them and to take extra precautions if we're going to be around high-risk individuals or if high-risk individuals work for us or are coming to our businesses, that's really important that we take extra precautions to protect them. So if you want to read all of the phase guidelines, you can go to coronavirus.utah.gov and they have um, more specifics if you're interested in those. So we're gonna go through some of the general business guidelines and if you have any questions, feel free to ask at the end, but Rochelle will cover this next portion of our presentation. Haley, thank you very much. Um, everyone, as mentioned, my name is Rochelle Blackham and I am the Environmental Health Division Director um, and I will be going over the general guidance <clears throat> As you can see, um, we are working off our individual devices because we're social distancing here in our office. But um, sorry for uh, taking a moment to switch over to my computer. But what I'd like to tell you is that we will be reviewing the general business guidance that's listed in the Utah Leads document, uh, Utah Leads Together. And currently, um, they released new guidance on Friday, so we're in version 4.4, and I actually think it's listed possibly 4.4.3 or something. So um, I wanted to point out that in this document, there are several sections that, that general businesses are asked to follow. Um, we're looking at pages 2, 5, 10, and 20. So in the webinar, we're hoping to actually... Um, just go over all the guidance that you guys need to follow as well as Kaylee showed you our website and we have some overview or some single pages for general business that combines everything and it's very simplified um, on what you need to do in a one page document. So let's move on. First off in the general business recommendations, the biggest thing is to take reasonable reasonable precautions. And I really want to um, emphasize this over and over because as Jay and I have been out in the field and we've been going 
um, and inspecting different facilities as well as looking at different plans. No one plan is gonna fit every business, even if it's within the same industry. So as we go through the presentation, I want you to um, think about how your business can uh, work through these different recommendations and do it as it fits your business and your needs. Um, and then of course, if you have questions, just as Kaylee and Rob mentioned, feel free to start asking them now. I have Jay helping me answer them. And then at the end, um, we'll also have a question and answer. So I'm also gonna go over encouraging remote working um, as well as symptom screening, um, social distancing, strict hygiene, cleaning and disinfecting, uh, face covering and masks, protecting high individuals, and then some other practices. So the first thing, and when I looked at who is on, uh, who's participating in the webinar, it looks like there's just a wide range of businesses. So um, I'm gonna try to make this um, work for everyone, but remote work is still preferred or encouraging flexible working arrangements. What that might mean is remote working or teleworking or possibly rotating shifts uh, to where not everyone is in the office at the same time. Or it could mean when you're having meetings similar to how we are here in the health department, you're, you may be in the same building, but you're still not having gatherings of employees. So you're using the different avenues like Zoom or Google Meets. Um, Again, whatever works best for your business, just trying to promote less people in the workplace if, if possible. And then exercising discretion when returning back to work. So when you think about this, um, as we move from high to moderate to low risk or red to yellow, um, we've been doing this slowly, kind of rolling it out more like baby steps. And that's what we're encouraging here as everyone returns to work in the yellow is move slow, um, take precautions as needed, do what you can um, instead of we're calling it more of turning the light switch on like a dimmer, dimmering it back on instead of just flipping the light switch. And I already kind of talked about this, just um, using email and phone um, communication, even when you're in the same building to eliminate um, congregating. So when it comes to symptom screening, um, <clears throat> monitoring employees for symptoms and well-being. Um, and we'll talk about that on the next slide, mainly on the, the symptoms. But employees who develop COVID-19 symptoms or are sick or become symptomatic at work, what we want employers or general businesses to know that if someone's sick, we want them to be um, separated for the other employees, sent home as quickly as possible. And then obviously you're gonna wanna sanitize the workspace in different areas that um, they may have touched. And we're asking general businesses that if the health department, um, uh, if you have a positive case or someone who is exposed and they are either being self-isolated or quarantined, we're asking general businesses to prohibit them working or coming to your facility. That doesn't mean that they might not be able to work remotely. We just don't want them to be out and about um, and spreading the virus. So again, when it says monitor employees for symptoms and their well-beings, we actually have this really nice guidance that's available online. Oh sorry about that, that uh, employee self-monitoring and guidelines during COVID-19. This is just, is just some general information, but I think it's a help. It's a, a really helpful check box um, poster that employees can use. And it kind of tells them, hey, before you come to work, check your temperature. And this is what you're looking for. A fever is 100.4. Check your symptoms. Do you have any of these things? If you do, seek out your medical provider. Assess your exposure. Have you been around someone who has COVID-19 or has symptoms? Or is there someone in your household that is sick right now? So um, I think for general businesses, this is a good practice to put into place for your employees. And this is what we mean by symptom checking. Um, symptoms do include a fever of 100.4 degrees or above. It includes a cough, uh, trouble breathing, a sore throat, sudden change in taste or smell, muscle aches or pains. And again, when we just keep getting this question over and over, how do I check my employees? Do, you know, what do I need? It's very specific on who needs to keep logs. 
on um, temperature reading for employees. And in general, general businesses do not need to keep a log for the health department. But you should still um, monitor your employees for symptoms. So this could include a verbal checklist. It could include a policy that you might put into place. It could include um, you asking each of your employees if it's this appropriate setting. Hey, have, do you guys have any symptoms? Have you traveled um, in the last 14 days? Anyone in your household sick? No, and you kind of document that. It could be um, sending out an email and then reporting every day that they are not symptomatic. Um, it could just be as easy as sending out an email to all of your staff. Like if you are symptomatic, if you have one of these things, we really want you to not come to work and just informing them of what the policies are and what the expectations for your business are. Um, again, we talked about this. So in restaurants and in gym settings, they are needing to um, temp their employees. In this case, um, anyone with a fever, again, of that 100.4 uh, should not enter any facility. They, they shouldn't be out in the public because they're sick. Um, when talking about what thermometers should be used to take temps, I realize that it's been difficult to get um, contactless thermometers because they've been sold out. So um, if you're wanting to have a thermometer available for employees, I do believe at this time as we've moved into yellow, that was one of the things that we considered is it, it appears that some of this equipment is available again. You can use one of the um, infrared contactless uh, thermometer devices that you can kind of buy more at a hardware store. They are not calibrated though for, hu for taking human temperatures. Um, they're more of a screening tool and what manufacturer recommendations are saying that if you put the infrared reading on the forehead, it's actually gonna take an average reading of a one inch diameter. And the correct reading of a forehead for those type of devices is 90 degrees to 94 degrees. Um, if you're using a thermometer that requires some form of contact, maybe it's in through the ear or actually has to touch the forehead, um, have, you know, alcohol wipes or sanitizer to sanitize the equipment and change the um, protective sleeve in between employees. But considering you're not required to do it at a general business, I think uh, the easiest tactic would be to ask your employees to take their temperatures before coming to work every day. So talking about exposure to COVID-19 and what does that mean? So I know that um, Kaylee kind of mentioned it, but if somebody is closer than six feet for longer than 10 minutes with an individual that turns out to have be COVID-19 positive, then that would mean that they were exposed. Um, and when an individual is exposed, we are then asking them to quarantine for 14 days. So, I have a lot of questions around this. If the individual, um, well, first off, we would notify that individual during our tra trace back um, exercises or investigating. Uh, let's say that Amy has is COVID positive and she had close contact with Shelly. So if that's the situation, Amy through our um, interviews would tell us that she was in contact with Shelly. So we'd reach out, the health department would reach out to Shelly and ask her to self quarantine for 14 days. Now this is where um, we have a lot of questions. So if Shelly goes and gets tested on day five and she's actually turns out to be negative, she still cannot or should not return back to work. She needs to complete the full 14 day quarantine because that is how long um, it takes from being exposed to when you could develop symptoms. So even though at day five you were negative, she could become sick on day 10. So we really are asking exposed individuals to self-quarantine for 14 days. And again, the health department is going to reach out to these individuals and let them know. And I realize as a business owner that there are some individuals taking advantage of the situation, saying that they are on quarantine. Um, if that does happen, please notify the health department. We can't give out um, personal information, but we can help give guidance on um, what you should and shouldn't do. As far as testing positive, when an individual tests positive, just so business owners and representatives understand how this works. Um, so if they have symptoms, 
Um, the answer is they must be have improved symptoms and fever free for at least three days, but it also must be at least 10 days from when they first got sick. So I realized that someone could get sick and two days later they feel good and they want to return back to work. The answer is no, it needs to be at least 10 days from when they got sick. And on the flip side, there could be somebody that's symptomatic for three weeks. We then want them to at least feel better or have improved symptoms for three days. Um, and then we have individuals that are asymptomatic, meaning they've tested positive for COVID, but they um, have never been sick. So for those individuals, if they have a positive test, we want them to um, self-isolate for 10 days from when that positive test came out. And again, we are gonna give guidance to the individuals that test positive, and we are gonna give guidance to the individuals that have been exposed to somebody who's test positive. Now, as far as a business letter, exclusions from work come into play. So, um, and this unfortunately has happened. We've had um, work sites that have been impacted by this virus. And so you have, we have a couple different resources for you, but if an individual is tested positive, we are gonna reach out if they identify your place of business to where they work. We are gonna reach out and ask you for their schedule to determine who may have been exposed in the workplace. So you have a positive individual from the day they got sick, we wanna see who they worked with or were within close contact for seven days prior to when they became sick. And from there, we're gonna determine other employees that may have been exposed. Um, and then we'd like them to be excluded from coming into the workplace. That doesn't mean that, again, that they couldn't do remote work if, you know, if, they're, if they can. Um, but we don't want them to be out there spreading it. And um, as we move forward, what we're seeing and what Keely, I believe, pointed out is that most of these contacts are known contacts. Um, we've, we're really proud of the fact that the community spread or unknown contact has stayed low. So in the majority of these cases, we've seen um, one individual get sick and the next individual gets that gets sick is somebody that they were in close contact with. So we feel like, oh, we know that they got it from that person. Um, and unfortunately that does happen in the workplace. So what we've seen is where there's been a need for us to go out and do some mobile on-site testing at work sites. So if there are multiple employees that are positive at one place, we have a team and we are available to come out and do testing. Um, and that may be an effort that we need to do in some places. So when it comes to social distancing, of course, this is one of um, the major precautions that should be put into place to avoid the spread. So it says maintain at least six feet distance from each other, um, especially when you're talking about workstations. So if you have a reception desk and you have two receptionists, you know, spread them out. Um, don't have them face each other. That way, if one of them coughs, they're kind of back to back. I mean, um, do the best you can for in the places that you work. If you have multiple employees um, that are out in a warehouse, try to move them where they're doing their job and they're kind of social distanced. Again, when it says limit employee to employee contact, think about your businesses and where people congregate. Like, is that the lunchroom? If it's the lunchroom, kind of space out the tables, put signages in there asking people to social distance um, because ultimately it will affect your business. If someone gets sick and then, um, you know, you had a work site party and everyone was around everyone and then people get quarantined, that will affect businesses. So we're asking you to, to help limit employee contact. Again, minimizing customer interactions in time spent in your facility. We realize that this isn't possible for everywhere, but if there's a chance that you could have them review products um, or pictures of products instead of them just wandering and touching all the products within your facility, obviously that's something we would encourage. And then limit group sizes when possible. As far as strict hygiene, I think everyone has heard this just over and over and over again, but um, truly, if you can wash your hands frequently, if you have hand sanitizer, you know, available upon entry and encourage your employees to, to sanitize when they enter your facility, then that's less likely that they'll be spreading germs throughout your facility. Um, avoid touching your face, have etiquette when you're coughing or sneezing into your elbow. 
um, so that you're just not projecting germs. Um, do not shake hands, avoid physical contact. We have all kinds of signage. Um, we have like no hands shake sign zones and different things to support you with these efforts so that you can put them around your business. As far as cleaning and disinfecting, I also feel like this is something that people are doing regularly to protect themselves. But obviously we're encouraging you to regularly clean and sanitize your facility. As far as increasing, and then we're also asking you to increase cleaning at high touch surfaces. Um, high touch surfaces, as you know, can be like doorknobs, light switches, countertops, things like that. Um, as you look at your business, if there's a back room that people are going constantly in and out of, like we would recommend that you prop the door open so that people aren't touching the door or touching the doorknobs. Um, just think of ways to eliminate high touch surfaces and then if you can't eliminate them, just make sure that you have some kind of a cleaning plan to clean these different parts of your facility. And again, this is just a reminder again, immediately clean and disinfect if you have an employee that's sick disinfect their workstation and all the high touch surfaces that they may have, may have touched. Um, it does say disinfect between customers and clients. And this is such a broad statement. And again, is, is gonna be case by case and how this works within your business. But uh, maybe you're handing samples or products to a customer to show them what's available. You would wanna disinfect those before you put them back on the shelf to then show to somebody else. As far as ma mask, and face coverings go. Um, they should be worn when you cannot maintain the six feet distance. So if you're gonna be interacting with a customer close to close, um, in close contact, we would obviously recommend that the employee as well as the customer wears a mask. That way you're eliminating the possibility of an exposure between both of you. Um, we think that the masks do prevent spread for the individuals who wear them and to others, as well as it comes into play with the asymptomatic individuals. Um, when you're wearing a mask, you are gonna need to do some cleaning of the masks if they're reusable ones. So we're recommending you to, to clean those daily or have different ones or have a fresh one. Um, we're not saying that the mask 100% replaces social distancing or hand washing needs. It's just an extra precaution to come into play. And the guidance is clear that if you can't maintain social distancing, that you should both be wearing a mask. Um, a couple don'ts is, CDC is saying that children under the age of two should not be wearing a mask. And anyone who cannot remove and put on the mask themselves, it may not be safe for them to wear a mask. Um, but when you are wearing a mask, we are saying make sure it covers your nose and your mouth, keep it clean and wear it when you go out in public, make sure you can breathe, um, those different things. As far as requesting these personal protective equipment like masks or hand sanitizer or gloves, uh, we realize that businesses may not be able to get their hands on these. So there is state and local programs to help. Um, if you're struggling to obtain some of the items, we've put our number here, but we've also put a link. And what the link will do is have you work through an assessment as well as an order form. So as you do the assessment, it will say, this is my business and uh, this is how many employees or how many customers we see. Um, this is how many supplies I have on um, currently in stock and this is what I'm requesting and then those requests will come to us and through state and local programs we can get those or help you get those. So again when is mask coverings required? I realize that this is a general business one and so it's not probably going to be specified as a requirement um, but just for your information when you're dining in it as, as a restaurant the employees should be wearing masks. When you're getting a personal service, um, like getting your hair cut or a massage, maybe a tattoo, um, the employee as well as the customer because of the close contact should both be wearing a mask. In a gym, the employees who are not gonna be maintaining six feet distance again should be wearing a mask. And then in all retail, it's, re it's encouraged because um, there may be a chance in which six feet distancing um, is not possible. So again, we are recommending um, wearing a mask whenever social distancing cannot occur. So high risk individuals um, really want to point out that this particular um, 
group of individuals are being impacted. I mean, you can see it nationwide, these high-risk individuals, which include people over the age of 65, individuals with underlining health conditions, um, pregnant women, you can read the list yourselves. But we are seeing it here in Davis County. Unfortunately, the deaths that we had, as well as nationwide, this is the group of individuals that we need to protect. Um, so as an employer, we're asking if you have high risk individuals that work for you to allow for remote work as much as possible. Again, have flexible working hours or stagger shifts. Try to protect them. Put them in an area that's six feet away from everyone else and minimize face to face contact with them if possible. So other practices, um, avoid handshakes avoid unnecessary contact, um, and then consider practices that um, protect employees and customers, like propping the door open, having contactless pay options if possible. If your business is in a position where you could put the partitions between because you're gonna be face-to-face -face with customers all day long, that might be an idea. Um, Non-punitive leave policies is a recommendation as well. I mean, the way that you encourage employees to stay home is to let them know that um, they're not going to get fired if they stay home, if they test positive. Different things like this obviously um, are just recommendations and you guys can do what you can, basically do what you can. Um, the other thing we wanted to touch on is CDC does have travel um, health information and you may have employees that are taking vacations um, and they may be going to areas that have travel restrictions or um, uh, may be considered high risk areas and there are recommendations that if they travel to these high risk areas that when they return to work that they should self quarantine for 14 days. So, so those are some different things to also consider. Um, lastly, just as a reminder, just talking about COVID-19, um, we are still learning about the virus and what causes COVID-19. We do, currently do not have a vaccine to prevent the COVID-19. Um, the best way to prevent being ex uh, the virus is not being exposed. And so that goes back to sick people staying home. It goes back to social distancing, goes back to using the mask. Um, take extra precautions for the high risk populations. Um, if it's possible within your business to have a set time for high risk individuals to shop or visit you, then we would encourage that. And then it does come down to individual responsibility, like the individuals who test positive or are sick. We would really like to encourage them to stay home to prevent the spread. Um, it comes down to community partners like you guys who can help spread the message or, or help adhere to these guidance so that we can continue to trickle in cases instead of having any additional peaks. So, um, as I finish up the presentation here, we want to make sure you are sent with resources or contact information that you might need. Um, so as mentioned, I am the environmental health director here at the Davis County Health Department and our division uh, permits businesses mainly uh, for for help. <laughs> help things, but that would include like restaurants, swimming pools, um, delis, I'm trying to think what else um, might fall into general business, but uh, we do inspect and permit the, some of the personal service items as well and any complaints about businesses, those would all come to us. So if you have any questions about how your business should operate, feel free to call our main line, it's listed there. If you have questions that are more medical related, like you have an employee who's positive, or you think that there's a work site exposure, um, really wanting to ask questions about the medical side, we've provided our nurses line. And again, we have provided a link here to our website, um, the exact link that Kaylee, or site, excuse me, that Kaylee went over to show you what resources we have available. And again, we have a new kind of logo slash tagline here as Davis County, uh, safe, smart, and strong, and, and we need your help to um, bring us up to this, uh, well, geez, my mind just went blank, but safe, smart, and strong, we need your help to reach those goals in preventing the spread of COVID-19, and, and I think by attending this webinar, you're, you're doing the right thing, you're asking questions, and I think all of us together can move forward. Um, 
Uh, lastly, I'm going to have Rob talk about these contact information. He's a better, a better source for this. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for all the great information. Um, so these are just a few for the uh, economic and financial resources. So the first one is uh, my direct line. So please feel free to call me um, with any questions you have regarding um, financial assistance or any other business assistance. Hopefully I could help with that or point you in the right direction. Um, this next number is the Small Business Development Center. Uh, there's an SBDC office in the Davis Tech College. And that number is for Andrew Willis. He is the director of the SBDC. Um, and they are there for, to help consult small businesses. So whether it be with business plans, um, with growth modeling or anything like that, um, that's what they're there for. They received um, some additional revenues through the CARES Act. So they have increased their uh, consulting capacity. So if you have a, a question regarding your small business, please reach out to him. Um, and then there are two other um, ones on there. No, you're great. The first was the Commercial Rental Assistance Program. So I'm sure many of you are aware of that. That is the one that the state legislature created. They set aside $40 million to help with rental assistance. Um, you can apply and get up to $10,000 to help offset some of your um, lease costs. Uh, as of last week, um, they still had $30 million available. So I would definitely suggest that if you've been impacted negatively by COVID and you have uh, a monthly rent, then um, fill out an application because chances are pretty good that you could receive some funding there. Um, and then the last one is with, with Weber County, we created the Northern Utah Economic Response Team. Um, and that is the link to our website for there, which has a lot of different business resources. Um, if you have had to furlough or lay off some of your employees, there's also a page there for, it has job postings um, for companies that are currently hiring. And there's some corporate donation uh, page that kind of highlights some of the good news and good happening that's been happening with different companies. Um, so those are the main kind of four things that I just wanted to highlight there. Um, so now moving on, we'll move on to our question and answer portion of the uh, presentation. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have a question, um, please write it in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, and we will get to those questions. Um, I think the first thing I'll do while those are writing is just there's been two that have been answered. But Dave asked, if someone becomes sick at work, how do you handle keeping that information somewhat private? Small companies, I see this as a challenge. And Jay mentioned that um, they work directly with the company to see which employees have been exposed um, and what the practices have been. And then they issue that letter that Rochelle talked about. Um, and then staff wearing masks is a great way to exclude the others from getting sick. And then Kaylee followed up with just saying that there are many illnesses that have the same symptoms as COVID-19. So it may be helpful to reiterate to employees, just because someone gets sick at work, it doesn't mean that they have COVID-19. Um, and any employees that have a symptom that's like COVID-19 should be tested. And then Dave also asked if there are any sample policies of how we can communicate with employees about concerns. And we don't have any uh, specific sample policies, but there's lots of posters available on the website that can help communicate precautions to take um, that would also be a good resource for um, consumers. Um, two other questions just came in. Carrie asked, uh, I need the N95 masks to work. I use a sandblast cabinet and work with pow powdered crushed glass. Is it possible to contact the PPE phone line to help get the masks for personal work? So Rob, I know um, that the PPE is being prioritized at the moment. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is to fill out the form um, and, and go through the assessment and what your needs are and the individual on that, individuals who are helping distribute the PPE can make that decision. But unfortunately with it being prioritized, I would think that public use or excuse me, personal use would probably um, not get any of those items. Okay. Um, and then Dave Rada also asked that he's worried about disclosing private health information when sickness does happen. Any suggestions for that? 
Yeah, I know that can be really difficult. And again, like Dave mentioned, just in small businesses, um, and as Keely mentioned, that just because someone's sick, they may not have COVID. Um, unfortunately, in our experiences, as if an uh, uh, employee becomes sick and then during an interview process says, well, I had coworkers that I was with, within close contact with, then we end up reaching out to those close contacts and then you kind of see the rumor mills kind of kind of go around. And um, Dave, we understand that it, it may be difficult in keeping people's um, medical information um, protected, but I think you could rely on the health department for that. I mean, I think that's kind of what our job is. So if the health department has not reached out to you um, as far as informing your employees, then you don't have anything to worry about. Um, and then when we give you a letter that excludes individuals from working, you don't need to disclose that information to anyone else. You don't necessarily need to speak about it. Just so-and-so is not at the work and that's all you need to know. Um, that's the best advice I can give. <clears throat> Thanks, Rochelle. Um, and then Angie asked about posting the website for requesting PPE again. And uh, Kaylee has provided that link on the chat. Uh, to go with that question too, um, we're recording all these webinars and we'll be making them available in a few days. Um, and we have all your emails to those that registered, so we'll send out a link uh, to those webinars when they're posted, but they'll most likely be on the D county COVID-19 main page. Um, we also, Paige, uh, she sent us three questions prior to the start of the webinar. So the first one is, are there local resources for businesses to assist them with providing any PPE for their employees? So I feel like that's that link right there. Um, I know some people also, the state did a PPE push pack um, and our county handed those out yesterday. So hopefully some businesses are able to receive those. I'm not sure if they'll follow up with an additional one, but, um, but uh, that Northern Utah Economic Response website, uh, we would post that link if there is another one for that. So stay tuned for that. And then also go to that website. Um, two, in an effort to rebuild consumer confidence, will there be any general postings available for businesses to use in a visible capacity with regards to maintaining social distancing, cleanliness, employee health and hygiene standards, et cetera? So those posters um, that are available on the health department, that's a great thing to post those in public places. I know also part of the reason we did this webinar is we wanna boost uh, consumer confidence in the county. So we thought a good first step would be to um, help raise safe awareness for the businesses and then we're currently working with the health department to determine if there's some sort of thing that we could do that uh, you could post later in your business that said that you know you're doing these uh, safety precautions to help um, ensure uh, consumer safety in your establishment. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add Rochelle to that. Um, nothing to that topic, um, Rob, but I think I may have answered Carrie's question a little off. As I reread it, it looks like um, he needs a mask for working. Um, so what I would encourage Carrie to do is have his employer or business fill out the form and say, do the, the type of work that we um, uh, we do at this business, we need PPE and we're out of it. So I would recommend him filling out the form. Perfect, thanks. And then Paige's last question was, are there currently state or local level postings per the current Utah reopening status that businesses can utilize either for social media or in their office? Um, so I know our tourism department is working on some, um, some social media postings. So we'll be sure to email those out as well when um, those have been finalized. And I don't know if the health department has anything for that as well. So yeah, on our social media pages, so Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we share different graphics that you're welcome to use. They answer frequently asked questions about our different phases that we've been in. So we've had some for that moderate orange risk. We have some that we just posted over the weekend for our low risk guidance. Um, we also just have some general social media messaging like we've seen today in this presentation about hand washing, social distancing, those kind of messages. And we're happy to work with you too if there are specific images, messages that would be useful for you and your business through social media or different posters, things like that. Please reach out to us. We can help with any of those things that you need. 
Great, thanks so much. So any other additional questions? I believe we've answered all that have, that have uh, come in. There's also an option to raise your hand if you have a question that is difficult to type out or um, please raise your hand while we're waiting for those last questions. I also just wanted to say that we'll be sending out an evaluation form to all those that will survey that uh, took part in this webinar just to get your feedback on your thoughts on the webinar and any suggestions you have on improvement. As I mentioned before, we're, we're doing technical assistance with businesses during this COVID-19 pandemic. So we wanna know how we can improve and maybe if there's other subject matter that would be interest, you'd be interested in listening to. So I don't see any other questions. So I just wanna thank our panelists and thank all the attendees that joined on for this webinar. We hope that it was beneficial for you and please feel free to reach out to the health department, reach out to the county economic development department. We're here to help and hopefully uh, we could help answer some questions and we're in this together. So thanks so much for joining and have a great day.